everybody. How are you doing today? It's Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and on the mic today is John. Hey, guys. How you doing? Uh, let us know how our sound is, because we have a little craziness before a sound check. So right up, pop, pop, pipe up right away and let us know how <laughs> our sound is. Um, I'm so excited to be sharing today's painting with you today. Today, we're going to be doing this Ooh. palette knife wave. How textural is that? Super easy. Super fun, super like wherever you are in your art journey, you can get something. That's right, because it doesn't focus. There, there. Okay, we may have to give John pictures of these things before we get online. We're doing this on a 16 by 20 canvas, and we're going to be using uh, palette knives. Of course, as I've said before, there are lots of rooms and hacks. You can use a good stiff brush and still get this technique. You could use a cut up credit card and still get this technique. Um, I don't mind the plastic knives. You're going to need one bright brush just to paint a base or undercoat on the canvas. Definitely try to get one of the Bob Ross shaped knives. Those were his signature design. And I'm also going to be using one of the diamonds at ah. least. So a diamond, and those are the shapes that I'm going to be using. This stuff is all in the information below, like 16 by 20 canvas, paint colors. Paint colors today are so fun. Paint colors are phthalo green, titanium white. Look at these giant glops of paint. Cad yellow, purple, dogzine purple, which I put way too close to my cad yellow. Don't do that. Move yours away from it. Phthalo blue, and a little burnt sienna. little burnt sienna. If you don't have burnt sienna, um, kind of a rusted orange brown or even a cad red medium will help. We're going to just tone our thalo blue back a scotch, a smidge a little bit with it. If you did the big art quest. Oh, my camera's going crazy. Hold on. If you did the big art quest while I'm That's fuzzy. That's my fault. Whoa. Hi. That's totally my fault. It's your vision. Fault. It's totally not us. It's totally you. Totally my fault. I pushed <laughs> the wrong button. Doing today? Look at if that. If you were wondering if this was live and real and authentic, <laughs> that would be your answer right there. Um, and we're going to talk a lot about how palette knife painting works. Like we've done a couple. So I feel like we can, even though this is very easy, we can get in that conversation a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of excited. Ask your questions. Um, type them in caps if you have questions. John tries to catch them as they go by and ask them of me. And the moderators really try to get them. So we'll do our best, you know. But we've always got the artsherpa.com. Oh my another gosh. place or the Facebook page. I try to get to questions. I do. I, I do okay. There, so I looked over there giving me a little hard time. Then I looked over there's 230 people out here with us. Because like, oh. they're ready to wave they're, it up, right? Oh, yeah. All right. So go. let's, while we're getting started, I've got some wishes on the can do, canvas. Do, yes. Do the wishes I, I really think it's important to be in a good heart and spiritual space. And one of the things that I've always liked to do is put wishes, intentions, thoughts, ideas, fears, things on the canvas and then paint them in. Yeah. That kind of helps me work through them. And today I put some very ones in. I, of course, wish that this painting found as many people as needed it as it could so that it went as far as it could. But I had a very special wish because this is the Good Vibration painting. Yeah. That's what its name is, Good Vibrations. Because that's what I want for you is Good Vibrations. So in that Good Vibrations, I really specifically am asking the universe, and I put in here, a greater understanding of PTSD and all that that means with more qualified physicians and healers in that field. Yeah. I am hearing back from you guys a lot, and it seems like PTSD is a really not understood condition mm -mm. that does not have a lot of support system in the medical community, and they're still working out how they're even treating or diagnosing. So that's my wish, is a greater understanding and empathy, of course, relief for you guys that are going through this, going through this. Because you know what I've learned? What's Tom? that? It's not just for soldiers. Oh, yeah. No, this, no. No, this can happen to all kinds of people for all kinds of reasons. And it's, again, one of those hidden illnesses that people maybe are not as empathetic as they could be. Yeah, it's, a, it's very, yeah. very real. So qualified healers. And then I also wanted um, to, uh, I want hope for the hopeless. Mm -hmm. That's right. A good one. If just a little hope can come in, if you're at home and you're feeling hopeless, if just a little hope could come into your day, that is a wish that I have in my canvas. And then my last wish I put in before we started was a cure for MS. Yeah. Because that's I have a whole list of diseases I'm completely over and I'm ready for them to cure, and MS is definitely one of them. Yeah. Aren't you? Just like there's just this whole list, and that's definitely in my top twenty of just things that they could just cure. I'm, I'm going to give a big hug to all, our, all, all the community members who are having an IBS day. 
Oh. I noticed we have a couple, couple of people in there saying, yeah, I had one this morning myself, too, so I totally get it. Yeah, so autoimmune stuff, man. Yeah. What is going on with that? So, yeah, just relief for all of us. Mm -hmm. So if you're at home, put wishes in your canvas. Put dreams in there. If you, if you see somebody else's wish come up on the feed, for sure, put it in your own canvas. You can pay yep. it forward a little bit, and I love that. Dominique needs one. She's huh? Dom Dominique needs one. She's got. She's wishing for babies. So, so we need a light keeper to grab that and put it on a canvas. Light keepers. Let's all put some wishes out there for Dominique for some babies. Yeah. I know how that feels. We did the baby <laughs> dance. We did. So this is a number twelve bright by Simply Simmons. Mm -hmm. And it's the extra firm filament. Yes, I'm still missing Goldilocks and the girls. <laughs> she's she's taking a vacation. <laughs> she is. She was tired. She didn't feel like I was taking good enough care of her, and she bailed. <laughs> That's what happened. She's somewhere here. She's we'll somewhere it. here. And I'm going to just paint a very, very dark ground on my canvas. I'm actually going to just even, you know, just take the blue and the purple, and I'm just going to paint this whole thing with a dark ground. And when we're doing palette knife or impressionistic work, it's always a good idea to pick a color and paint a solid color across your canvas. Don't use too much water because that can cause underbinding, but you want it to flow enough to easily paint the whole canvas. Yeah. Painting these wishes in and energizing them. I'm kind of paying attention to my brush stroke, but honestly, since this is all going to be covered in globs and globs of palette knifey, Nonsense. Mm -hmm. Doesn't really matter. Just matters that the canvas is blue. I could take this out and spray paint it blue too, by the way. You could. Yeah, with Liquitex spray paint acrylic, for <laughs> sure. Just be done. Dude, those guys have some really cool spray paint. <laughs> they do, say. but you know what? The spray paint guys have some feelings. Yeah, they do. They do, and they're not loving the nozzles is what I'm hearing. Really? So I don't know where it's at currently, but that's what I got reported back mm. was that they didn't like the softness, the artiness of the nozzle. Mm. It's too arty. I don't know. I'm sure they'll work it out because Liquitex is an active conversation with its community. Well, I, and I, so they always work these things out. I never worry. I know you can swap out the tips, and they have different effects and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So they're they're an agile company. They try to really be there for the artists that work with them. As many of these, well, they have to be. These companies will have to be kind of agile, don't they? Yeah. Kind of have to because, like us artists, we're so moody, so difficult to please. We could go places. I have to say, though, I saw um, somebody report back some really good customer service from Liquitex. I even saved the post. It was in the Angelini group on Facebook. Oh, yeah? And she was saying how they um, something was wrong with her paint, and they had her send the SKU code. And they told her, well, it's five years old, so it should still be good because we guarantee our paint for eight years. Wow. So she had two reactions. This. She was like, I was in a brand new store, so why is this paint five years old? Right. <laughs> she's like that's weird she's like too how could they tell from the numbers it was five years old because i would like to know how to read them i didn't know the answer to that yet and then um the other thing was is that she was super impressed that they would guarantee paint for eight years yeah well so they replaced her too that's awesome my uh, chances are that that's, that, that they, they rotate their skew numbers they do something, but what was really interesting is they were like, hold on to the tube for a minute because we need to make sure that there's not a problem in that run of paint. So that's how kind of on it they were. Um, if you guys are having a good experience with a paint company, if some company, some distributor, anybody is treating you really good in the art world, please, please share those stories on Facebook or anywhere on the, on the website, just anywhere. Now, what blue is it you're using here? Thalo blue and dogs in purple. And honestly, I could have painted it all brown, all purple, okay. all green. I'm just trying to. I want a very harmonious painting. So I picked blue. Now, if you don't have thalo blue, is there a way to get it? No, thalo blue is definitely one of those colors that's mixed. But, you know, um, a lot of the companies have blues that are kind of in this range. And when you're looking for thalo blue, you're wanting a blue... That is, oh, uh, this is thalo blue green shade. Green shade, interesting. Right? So you want something that's in the green shade, that's very cool. Um, a lot of the paint companies have nice um, exchanges for that they might have. Like, I think Windsor blue and thalo blue are very similar, if I remember correctly. Gotcha. But I could be wrong here because I'm not looking at my book. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really paint with Windsor Newton, but like, you know, stuff like that. Prussian blue is a little darker than thalo blue. Yeah. But, you know, not bad. And, you know, 
But we want the phthalo for this painting because we're going to be making ocean colors. Gotcha. Now, if you guys have invested in Australian sienna and um, Southern Ocean Blue mm -hmm. from Matisse, definitely get into those and the highlights. Have a blast. Those are the ideal top of your wave colors. Imp, Imp's husband is enjoying your hat. You I'm have a Kraken on your head. Kraken! <laughs> Kraken on my head! I'm so excited about this. I'm going to dry this real quick with my hair dryer. Oh, no! I'm sorry, Don. Okay. So there she goes, and I'm going to say, hi, guys! Oh, wow, there's a whole lot of you out here today. There's like 260 people. I get so nervous when I look over and I see those, all you guys out there today. So how's it going? Thank you for coming and showing up and liking and commenting and subscribing and sharing if you can because sharing really helps and that lets YouTube know that you guys are all here and kind of like what you see and that way we can do more of it. So, oh, look, here's Luna. Luna, come say hi. Hi. <laughs> so she came over to say hello. Um, but big hugs to all you guys. Wow, there's so many of you today. I want to say thank you to all of, our, uh, all of our moderators that are out here today and all the light keepers who are with us today. Really appreciate you guys. Um, thank you so much for being here and sharing your pictures and just beating you guys. So, all right, she's back. So I'm. I love when you panic. <laughs> 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 so, um, how is that possible? She's been eating all day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> more, more snacks. <laughs> more, more, more of the girl face. So when you're painting water, I want you to think about something because I want you guys to not just do this wave. I want you guys to do a bunch of waves once I show you this principle, this technique. Maybe even play with the colors because this works in fantasy colors too. Uh -huh. I kind of talk to you about oceans and waves and how those are constructed. So the first thing is, is in water, in a body of water, if you can see the horizon line, it is level. Always. Hmm. If you see the horizon line and it's a body of water, it will be level. So, like, sometimes what happens when you guys are on trips and you take a picture of the ocean, your camera's not level, and you kind of take it awkward, and then you get this great picture, but the horizon line isn't right, and then you send me the painting you did from that picture, and the horizon line is at an angle, and, I'm, and they're like, you're like, why doesn't it look right? It's the horizon line. You can paint some crazy abstract water waves if you get some fundamental things correct, and one of the fundamental things you want to get correct is that horizon line being level. If you see it, it's level. Obviously not coming up the wave, that's curved. <laughs> sure. Right? But that's, the that's general a body of water. Yeah, that's a function of currents and seafloor and how the wave hits and then starts to climb, 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 and then it curves over. As there's a math thing to it. The wave is two times the foot and then I grew up in surfing town, so I know some weird wave facts. But you don't need to know them to paint it. You just need to know as it hits, as it hits and starts climbing up towards land. It's momentum and energy starts pushing it up, and that's how it gets its thing. And then as it starts breaking, as its speed and inertia starts breaking past where the foot is dragging, it creates this curl, right? And then there's the wall and the curl, and then there's where the break is. And that is how you surf. Okay. <laughs> well, God, I didn't even know Being that. Being able to look for that is how you surf. <laughs> <laughs> also, we're going to paint today. <laughs> All right, all right, kiddos. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna make a nice level horizon line, and we're gonna do it in the lower third of the canvas. Look, I'm gonna eyeball this in. You could absolutely measure this in. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure that it's not going diagonal like this. All right. So this is gonna be my horizon oceany line. It looks it looks very wavily. Yeah, it's just level. It's not like I. It's not perfect. If you're a perfectionist, go ahead and have a whole moment here. You could tape it. Yeah, it's totally fine. If you're a perfectionist, you go ahead and have a whole moment right there. There's And actually, so when we're painting palette knives, keep in mind it's messy. Expect mess. It's going to be everywhere. Also, uh, you're going to need a towel to wipe off your knives. And also, even though this is really an exercise in not overworking and letting things be and letting them imply something... As we journey forward, just know that we come back into the perfectionist world where we start doing architecture and things in perspective, but we're using the knives. And so this is not forever just the loose, expressive world we're living in right now. <laughs> I like the loose, expressive I world. I know, but I know some of our community is like, I'm dying here. <laughs> you could be a realist with a palette knife. You can actually be uh, quite, quite technical with a palette knife. So I'm pulling out, if you see this, Yes. I pulled out this little bit of brown, I'm squishing it down and I'm 
mixing it in to my blue. If you guys have been painting with me a while, you know this sort of grays out my phthalo. Interesting. See, I'm wiping it off. Now you're really scraping it up. Are you really blending that out, huh? Not too much. It's still marbled in here. Okay. It right? But more mixed than we have been doing in the past. And now I'm going to get some white and sort of marble that in. And that's, Ooh. see if I can show you the marble. There it is. Hot mess, big bead. Let's go. Okay. Top of this will be darker. Then, and I'm dragging it both ways. Try to mix your bead. Okay. Light pressure. Canvas is going to kind of show through underneath. Level if you can do it. And I'm just sort of even wiping my brush off here because I'm just having a whole moment. So there we go. Light pressure. Imagine this canvas is, is we're back to, to angry cat pressure. <laughs> That's where we're at. We want to keep this more darkly blue. Right? I'm going to be stroking to the left. So I'm going to put it on the right side of the knife. If I stroke to the left, I put it on the right side of the knife. So how would you pet a kraken? Oh, you don't pet a kraken. Kraken <laughs> eats you. That is your experience with the kraken. What are the kraken? Now, we see here how I'm letting this sort of blue peek out? Yep. That's okay. Okay. You can wipe your knife. Here's the thing people do. You can wipe your knife off on the canvas. <laughs> it's so crazy, but you can. You're like, I clean my knife. So you don't even have to waste an ounce of paint. So yes, that c this can be. And then another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and very lightly across the surface, drag my knife, which causes these little bits to pick up. Can we see that? Yeah. All right. Now, so the new, new camera can't zoom in as much as that, but I'm gonna, the, we're going to get a new lens for it here. We're going to get a new lens? Yeah, we're going to zoom Ugh. in more. We're always needing new equipment. Oh, yeah. So I've got the dark blue, pulling some white over here into it. All right, wiping it off, loading it up. See the load? Yeah. Nice bead. If I'm loaded on the left side, I must be stroking right. Right? Look at that go on there. Streaky, stormy sky. You can press in a little bit if you're trying to cover, but guys, don't overwork. The magic of these paintings is in what they imply. There's a big thing in art called implied line and implied texture. And the best thing I can equate it to, the thing I think that you guys might resonate with, is have you ever been in a car in the city or in a place where there's a lot of lights and the rain is sheeting down the window? And some of the areas are more in focus and some are just completely blurred out, but you really almost feel the city through that car window. I may, have, I may be alone in this. Sometimes <laughs> I have whole moments in a car window in the rain. But it's like it's that blurry kind of implied view, and it's like you're feeling the city more than you've ever felt it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's a lot what palette knife is about. It's about blurring the sense of reality into an emotional space. So if you're having an experience of extreme emotional bubbling up during palette knife painting, that's normal. Interesting. We are in some deep work here, guys. Some deep work. Because your left brain will start to get frustrated real fast and give up on this nonsense. <laughs> It'll go, no, 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 no. That's not what an eye looks like. Let me show you the symbol of eye. And your right brain will go, but this is about soul and spirit and well-being. And your left brain's going to check out. Now, you just double loaded that. I you? did. I'm like scraping up. Look at me. Scrape, 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 scrape. You got on both sides there. No, no. It's smeared oh. here. Oh, it's smeared there. It's loaded here. Where you see the the bead, Yeah. that's the load. And I'm going to the left, I mean, from left to right, so I've loaded on the right-hand side. So like, if you think about this, if I'm stroking to the right, yep. towards the right, I load on the right. If I'm stroking to the left, I load on the left. That is about 90% of what's going on with palette knives. <laughs> right? Yeah. And I'm just... Coming along here, and I might flip my knife over, right? Because that's the, that then makes it the right side stroke. And you can wipe off if you're if it's getting a little away from you on your towel. If you're painting with cadmium paints, boy, those towels no longer go in your kitchen, please. Cadmium is poisonous. You should show her the 
pile of towels that you've corrupted. <laughs> Studio tour. Because <laughs> you've got what? There's probably there's more there's more studio towels than there are house towels now. Sure, <laughs> it's happened. <laughs> I own it. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna stroke towards the left. So I've loaded the left. Here's a heavy bead. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm coming along. This is a stormy sky, and this is what I have the burnt sienna for. Right, I'm gonna switch to my left hand here for comfort because I'm trying to wipe this along, and then I'm gonna switch over and scrape up my right side moving towards the right. And where I feel like I've got some sort of ridge or some sort of disruptive line, look what I do. Come along lightly, and look what it does. It pulls out the white. Isn't that crazy? Oh, yeah. And it starts to create this sky that I can start talking about. That I'm talking about this crazy stormy ocean sky, because I have to have a reason why this wave is out in the deep ocean. There's no good reason for a wave to be out in the deep ocean. No. There are some good reasons, and they're generally in Tahiti. But <laughs> so, uh, so some of our community is asking, um, if, you're, if they're comfortable stroking just from one direction. Flip can, the canvas over. Okay, do you have to go both directions in this one, or is it okay? Could they you, do this? Okay, so like, say you're only comfortable stroking from right to, to left. Yeah then you're always stroking from right to left. Okay, so if, if you, you need... It, yeah. So you can just flip that canvas around if you need to. Yeah, work your comfort. It's okay. okay. It is okay to create in your comfort zone. There's no real benefit to really fighting your own physicality and what you have going on. Here you go, there's the bead. Nice. Stormy sky created here. Pull up some more of this. Right, I'm flipping it over because I loaded it on the wrong side. Right, and I'm just pulling this over, trying to break. Can we see the break here? How when I go across it light, it creates these like picture breaks. Yeah, where the paint breaks, the peak of the paint breaks. Yeah, it's it's not as much as the old Robo camera because you could zoom in more. Mm -hmm. But new robo camera is. We're gonna have to get better lens. We're gonna get a, we're gonna get a more so now telephoto. I'm not really pulling into my blue. I'm pulling into my white. Mm -hmm. We can see this, and I've got it loaded on the left hand side. Again, you guys can flip canvas or however you need to to be comfortable in this space. And I'm mixing lighter. This is important. Because in landscape painting often, not always, the horizon line, the sky at the horizon line or the water line will be lighter than it is at the top. Oh, that's interesting. Not always. Depends on time of day. But if you're trying to tell a particular story, that's a helpful way to do it. <laughs> if you need a little more blue, pull it out. Need a little brown, pull it out just to make sure it stays there, and then keep getting into the white. You're going to go through a lot of white today. Any heavy bodied paint is fine. Coming here to my, hair, my water line where I'm going to try to be as level as I can be. Flip sides. I'm just flip the knife. I'm just telling this. You can see how it's kind of lighter here. It does start to create a tail, right? And if you guys have gotten through the butterfly and you've gotten through the poppies, you're kind of feeling like, okay, I'm getting the gist of these tools. I'm painting with a sharp stick. Awesome, got it. <laughs> so, about how much pressure here is going on? Because they're 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 okay. Very, very so my pressure is definitely like if I were using a brush, this would be my dry brush pressure. My knife is fairly parallel to the canvas, right? But it's not dug in, because if I dig in, look what, I'm gonna show you real quick what happens if I dig in. Scrapes it. Oh, interesting. So, so I have to be along here parallel, pulling along. You're kind of glazing it. Glazing. This is so much like frosting a cake, you cannot even imagine. If you've been the, if you are the cake froster in your family, you have found your jam. Interesting. You're like, oh, I got it. Because this is what you're doing. You're frosting the canvas. You Artists know. everywhere who paint palette knives just threw up in their mouths. But 
you are. So it is what it is. I don't know what to say. We can make it, you know, all kinds of fancy, fancy things, but really you're frosting this canvas. I want to see a palette knife frosted cake now with like palette knife <laughs> painting <laughs> using colored <laughs> frosting. <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool? Yes. Because you could do flowers and all sorts of awesome I, stuff. I, I honestly think if you went on YouTube for like two seconds, <laughs> <laughs> you would find a lot of that. So I didn't have a tub today of blue, so I'm going to have to put out some more blue for my tube. Because I know on the bottom I'm going to need more. Um, and then uh, I'm going to put out some more white. This is my tub of white. Tub of white. Oh Hubble my gosh, White. there's 300 people. Say Hello. hi. Hello. How's everybody doing today? They're doing pretty awesome. They're I haven't had any other questions. Oh, they're, they're right now, they're, they're talking about uh, how awesome it is that there's 300 people and there's lots of hugs and kisses and and, and, and exclamations and hugs. and Because it's, it's awesome when we see 300 people. It's like, woohoo, hey, everybody. We like to party. <laughs> if your palette knives, especially if they're metal, get dirty and you're having trouble cleaning them, you, know, you obviously go into the sink and clean them. Don't use the sponge you use to clean these on your food or your dishes. Um, but beyond that, if you're having trouble get old paint, remember you can just soak them in uh, rubbing alcohol or acetone mm -hmm. on the metal ones. Yeah, they come clean pretty quick. And it, yeah, cleans them right up to brand new. So, you know, the plastics are a little bit more challenging on that, but, you know, and not that big a deal. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to pull a little green out. I'm going to pull a little blue out. Green and blue, right? Maybe a scotch, a smidge of yellow, and just a smidge of white. <laughs> Mr. Flame. He's Mr. Flame is here? Yeah, he's, he's like 300 people. This is Sparta. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, they're so funny. I love them. All right. So I'm planning my knife. See how my knife has an edge here? Yeah. I can plan it against the canvas. And I'm going to pull as level as I can a line of this paint coming out. All right? Just as I can. As you can. Don't go crazy. Don't go crazy. You can even pull some purple into this to darken it. All right? I'm going to come on the left side. Just trying to keep this level, level, level. Flip your knife over. This color should be kind of dark. Now I'm going to come across here like where I have this kind of uneven line and just pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it. Just do my best. I'm just, just do your best. Pulling the lift up on that one a little bit more. Okay. There we go. Now I'm just putting these colors down. I'm just getting this paint down here. Which easel are you using there? I use, um, I think it's in the description, because I get asked that question all the time. Hold on, I turn the camera. I go back over. Okay. I think it's in the description because like, I get asked that question all the time. And here is my feelings. And we'll have to do an easel quest, of, of course, at some point, because that's just too fun. But I have been painting with the best company for decades and decades. A number of decades, we will not say. <laughs> I love them. This particular one is the European. Before this, I was a big fan of the Santa Fe, mm -hmm. right? Um, w we kind of, you know, when, when you guys come visit and we go through the Texas Art Supply, we talk about the seating of an easel. An easel needs to be grounded. It needs to be solid because you should not be. You should be all expressive and crazy and having a good time and be like, ah, and, but your easel needs to be grounded. <laughs> And so Bess are really good at doing that, and I've liked them a long time, and I've just never had any problems from them, ever. Now, we've, we've picked up a couple of little easels we're going to do some reviews on yeah. after our trip. So we might have some, some more, because everyone was like, wow, that's a pretty yeah. pricey easel. Um, so there's a, there are some less expensive easels that we're going to be trying out, too. Yeah, and there we'll, are. We'll post th some of those up after this trip. But this one in the studio is the best if you're, yeah. if you're working... In the art field, it's a very good easel to have because it does a lot. It has a lot of feature. Yeah. A lot of feature. So they're, I mix this. commenting on that. It lays flat. It does. does all sorts of neat stuff. It lays flat, holds your cups, has this. There's so many things this easel does. And roll, I love it. There's one that freaks me out. We saw that at NAMTA show. Oh, yeah. And there's one that's got a remote control. We had the remote control one for a little while. I don't know what happened to that. Fire. So I'm pulling fire. That's right. That ruins an easel. House fire ruins an easel. 
Yes. And all your art. Just telling you right now. Here's the thing you might not know. If you have a collection of art, yours or someone else's, it requires a different insurance package mm -hmm. than just your homeowners. Yep. Steph, I wish I'd known. Okay, getting this color out. Getting it out. Having my ocean. You can already kind of see is blue sky ocean. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't take a lot. It doesn't take a lot. But you'll do it anyway. So it's Tina, fun. Tina's like, trip? What trip? And, uh, next week we're taking a trip. Uh, yeah. So we're, we're going to be going and doing some visiting, some interesting art places early in the week. And then later in the week, we're going to be going to New York City to do some more filming. We're going to be at the YouTube studios there. Like you do. Like you do. Once you're next up. Once we <laughs> I have to say, it's pretty awesome. They've, they've, been, they've been making sure that we have access to a lot of equipment and, and spaces. And it's, it's been pretty phenomenal, all the support YouTube's giving us. So yeah. Um, thank you, YouTube. Thank and you, YouTube. And thank all of you guys, seriously, for coming and showing up and like... Dude, we wouldn't have been YouTube next up without yeah, you. Without I you swear guys. that was a big thing of them picking us was you guys being so into painting and being in the show. And they were like, oh, people like it. <laughs> art on art on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It can get a little tricky down here. So if you need to, flip it. Uh, and then you make robot cam run all the way up the canvas. Yeah, but you know, then your shoulder is okay. Right? Deep water is dark. Deep stormy water is very dark. Water is also a mirror. So one thing we will have to do is reflect this color in this deep dark water. Yes. This is the story that we're telling. Whether we're telling it abstractly or telling it realistically, if the sky is this color, somewhere in here there will be reflections of this color. Okay. Right? Because this water reflects the sky. But the water itself is a very dark color the deeper it is and the colder it is. Oh. So if you're telling an emotional abstract story of a deep, dark, stormy thing out in the Pacific Ocean, that's a very dark water. You may even get into the cad red. Which is, if you guys remember earlier in the other lesson, I'm like, what's your basic color palette for an ocean? Huh. That's why cad red is in there. Interesting. Hmm? That's very interesting. Yeah, it is. Just little things that we're learning about water. That if you understand those fundamentally, you can just paint water. So Mark is having some trouble. When he drags his palette knife, he's noticing that there's a it's leaving drag marks at the tip and tail of the knife. Yeah, it does. It does. Can you see that on mine? Not as much. Okay, so what I do is I'll see the drag marks, and uh -huh. then you'll notice me go back. And I'll very softly, while the paint's all still wet, get rid of them. Uh, this is about controlling this brush pressure. So that's where that comes from. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Harder to do if you've cut a credit card, just not impossible because people can paint well with a stick. And of so. course, you know, that, that, that's assuming you don't have a bent knife or anything. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. You'd have to have a knife that was in fairly good shape and doing pretty well. I need your painting matches your hat. Does I plan that today? At the back I here. totally planned that today. Did you? Yeah. I gotta turn this. I don't want to have to because you know it's messy. <laughs> While it's wet, right? While it's wet, I'm gonna kind of lay in my wave story a little bit with my knife. Okay. Because when you're painting in a palette knife, you'll start sketching with your knife by subtracting paint, it's a subtractive method. In fact, it's a great technique when you're knife painting. If you've painted with my mom, Ginger Cook Live on YouTube, you'll see her scrape away twigs with her knife. Mm -hmm. She doesn't add twigs, you can on the knife edge, we'll talk about that later. She scrapes out twigs, she'll scrape out sharp edges or shapes. And where the wave is coming up, right, we're gonna want a shape. And here's what it is. So waves can be, if you'll Google some waves, you're going to see kind of like this loop shape. Yeah. And this is where the wave has broke and it's starting to come down and create the tube. Then you'll see the wall shape. Then you'll see like this shape. You'll see the fold over. I like to call it the fortune cookie. There's certain shapes because essentially 
a wave is like a glass tube that's in the process of melting. Oh. Right? So if you, if you made some glass and you heated some glass and you had it up real tall and it started to bend over. Yeah. If you look at what glass does when it does that color glass, it, there's very similar reflections and shapes and things in the wave. Because water is essentially what? See-through. Yes. Darker where it's deep. More translucent where it, the light is shining through it. All of these things let us tell the story of wave. One of the things is this wall. So is this wave created by wind? Is this wave created by coming up on a shore? You know, all these different things. That has to do with our curl. Surfers will be like all going bananas right now because they know. But what I'm going to say is my wave is going to be over here on this third. I'm going to come up to about this point on my canvas. All right, make a little kind of mark. I like that, that space. And I'm going to tell the curve of my wave. We see it scraping out? Yeah. Doesn't have to be perfect, guys, because we're going to be painting here a whole bunch. All right? You want more of a curve? You want more of a curl? You go like that. All right? You can really curl it if you go like that. That's all you're saying. You're just kind of, if you've mastered the letter C, you're okay here. And you can kind of even start to see it happen, you know, and be like, oh, wave, 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 wave. Look at that. Starts to tell the story of wave. Just that act. Yeah. Right there. Starts to tell the story of the wave. So that's what we're doing. This is our horizon line right here. This is the curve of our wave. And I'm going to, I could do this wet into wet, but I'm going to encourage you to skim the paint. Okay. Which means I want you guys to kind of hit it with a hairdryer. So it starts to create a skin. It is by no means dry. But just so that the paint is catching and there's a tooth and there's something for you to work with. Hair dryer time. Okay. Hey, guys. Now that it's hair dryer time, I'm left alone again. So I will say, wow, man, you guys, thank you for all being here today. It's like such, it's so nice to have everyone here. And I see, you know, it's, it, you guys have been... <laughs> You know, I, uh, I get so nervous when I get left here alone, but I appreciate how much you guys do to try to help me feel more comfortable with you guys and hanging out. And, uh, it's just been really nice to have all you guys here uh, as, as, as a community to chat with us. And um, thank you. And for like, commenting, and subscribing, I for always forget to ask about that. So don't forget to do that and share because that uh, helps like the intertubes know that you guys are here and you like it. And that I'm not completely alone out here, just staring at a microphone, not wondering what to do. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's what I do when I'm left alone is try to scramble for interesting things to talk about, which I don't have. But at least I guess that's something interesting for you to wait to listen to or not. You could just be like, no, just turn the music up and maybe we'll dance or something but see then she finishes up and i'm not you know just about the time that you're like no um, <laughs> she comes back so you have I someone come back yeah oh look there's a question too oh there's a question i'm gonna pull a little diamond out to sort of play with that a little bit this is a diamond shaped knife this is other really common shaped palette knife mm -hmm. and i'm gonna pull a little white paint and i'm gonna load it like this so it's loaded on the left hand side bead to the bottom mm-hmm and I may have to move my hair dryer over so it doesn't bug me. And I'm gonna come right here on my right hand side. Super light pressure, guys. I'm gonna start just skipping a little cloud bank here. Come down a little bit, skip a little cloud bank here. Pull some more paint. You can do this with your Bob Ross knife. It's the only one you have. I mean, he did his paintings with just one knife, which is why he designed that. So you'd be fine. I just like to break it up. See, I'm just skipping across the top. Yep. Light pressure, guys. Cracking pressure. <laughs> I don't even touch it. Just thinks it was touched. Paint was left there. So, Debbie was curious. Hmm. Do your brothers or sisters paint? I don't have any brothers or sisters. Ah, that would explain why they don't paint. You're being funny. I am. <laughs> well, they don't know. Apparently, whatever happened with me just discouraged my parents from <laughs> doing any more. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> no more. <laughs> It might have been a lot of work as a kid. See how this is kind of just making a cloud bank story here? Yeah. Right? It's just a little story. The paint underneath will pick up a small amount. Now I'm going to come along. 
my horizon line here from my wave mark that I made. And I'm just going to pull up just these little kisses of a line. I hope, I don't know how close you get in, babe. Um, medium close. Medium close. I hope everyone's seeing it okay. So can I ask you a question while you're doing that? Yeah. See, I'm just lightly kissing this up, though. Yeah. And I'm, I'm paying attention to this horizon line that I've got going here. You can ask me a question. I answer it. Okay. So, uh, so one of our community here says, asks, I want to use string gel to complete a painting. Mm -hmm. uh, which painting knife would you suggest to get a good bead? From string gel? Uh, yeah. With string gel? That's Yeah. I want to use string gel <sighs> to complete a painting. I have never used knives on string gel. I, um, because it's self-leveling, uh -huh. right? And it pours out. So what string gel essentially does, there's tar gel by Golden and string gel by Liquitex, right? I really love string gel. So you, you get your spoon or whatever it is, you swirl it, swirl it, swirl it around in your cup, and then you pull it up, and then this hair, this hair, we're going to do this in quest. this hair will start to pull out. And then you will start to drizzle it around, and it gives you that Jackson Pollock. Pollock. Interesting. That <laughs> Holy <laughs> Jackson Pollock thing. Um, if I was trying to get a bead, I would use a heavy gel, and I would use the bob knife. Yeah. One of the bob knives, for sure. And I would load a, a clean bead here. I'll do it right here. Okay. I'd load a clean bead here, and then I would, can we see it here? Yeah. And I would just press, press. See how that gets a really, isn't that a nice clean? Yeah. That's how you get an edge. Okay. Hopefully that helps somewhat. Okay. You just, you're like, tangent. That's okay. We can tangent as long as we're answering the questions. Oh, good. no, I'm happy to tangent. I just love you guys do that. And I also love that I'm like, oh, yeah, I can just show you how that's done. <laughs> I love that part. So I'm going to skip along here, and I'm letting the paint catch, and the knife pressure is super light, and it starts to tell this cloud bank story, and I'm enjoying my cloud bank story. I might come up here a little bit and take my bank up here because this is all it takes. Where you guys are going to struggle is you're going to want to overwork it. What do you mean by that? You're going to want to get in here. You're going to want to press harder. You want to come back a bunch of times to make it more resolved and more perfect. You're not going to want to allow the rainy window. Right? You're going to want to wipe the rain off the window, get those windshield wipers in your mind going, and get that picture clear. Gotcha. But there's value through the rainy window. So allow the rainy window. There we go. That's all I'm going to say, because I, too, am allowing the rainy window. There's a bank. Then I'm going to come and I'm going to pull a little yellow. I'm going to pull it into my white. This will be important later in our story. So I've got a nice little bead that I've loaded up here with some yellow. Are you teasing them? I am. <laughs> and I'm just coming along here and kissing the top of my implied bank with my yellow. It's okay that a little paint underneath comes up. It's okay that stuff is happening. I'm just telling a little story here. Got it? That's yeah. it. That's all I'm saying. Right there. Maybe that. That's it. I'm going to walk away from it now. Okay. Important that I leave this when I leave it. Important. Huh. I'm going to start working my water. All right. I'm going to start working my water. And so one of the things I definitely want to work with my water is making sure that some of this up in the sky is reflected in my water, even though I need very deep, stormy water. All right. So I'm going to put out a bunch of blue because I'm going to need the heck out of this blue. I'm going to put out a little burnt sienna because that was, if we remember, in the sky. And I'm going to start kind of recreating some of that. There, a little... Mix, 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 mix. We'll pull some white into that. Just a little bit of that needs to be here. And I'm going to, on the edge, out like this, I'm going to make sure that there's some places in my water. See how I'm using my knife edge? Yeah. I'm using my horizon line to help me remain level. I'm putting some of that reflection now I might move over to the horizontal. Now I'm getting closer. I'm going to add some of this in here. It won't stay permanently, but I just need some of it in my water. 
okay? Some of it. As I come up to the wave, I start to curve up. Start to curve it up. A lot of this is gonna get painted to another place. Okay, working it. Fun, 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 all right? You need to cut it there, you can cut it and just be like, oh, here's some more story. We're okay. Little dabs in the horizon, see? Get, and then when you're good, you're good. You're good, you're good. That's gonna be the hardest part for you guys. Breathe in, breathe out. When you're good, you're good. Just stop. I'm gonna get an elongated, fairly large diamond because this is a bigger piece. This is the, uh, basically the Goldilocks equivalent of palette knives. <laughs> If you can get them, if they're available in your area, there's a link in the description to them. That's awesome. But you know, they got plastic knives at Michael's. They've got other knives, you know, it's, don't be too stressed. Chances are you guys do not need the insanely good knives yet. I'm gonna pull a little purple out and a little blue. I'm gonna mix them together. I'm gonna add a little green to it. This is crazy. This side of my wave right here that I'm gonna be curving See me curving it? It's very dark. Needs to be. Needs to be dark here in this right hand corner because is that the deepest water, thickest water from our view? If this were a clear tube. Oh, right? that's huge. Colored, colored glass tube, any of that. That is where it would be the thickest and the least light could get through. So that is where we want our darkest colors. And, and look at the curve. I'm Applying, there's an applied line thing happening here. I'm following this curve that I created in. So this is challenging, but it's not challenging, if you guys know what I mean. Here's some green into this. It's loaded on my knife, spreading it a little bit like frosting, right? The blue is picking up. Thalo blue is so awesome here. Pull it up into the sky. It's okay that it's picking up the white underneath. And coming down here. Right now I can get into my just thalo and green, thalo and the green. Maybe I get a little white into that. All right now I got some ocean looking color here. I'm gonna come up here with this lighter color and come along the wave. Cool. Ah, this is all it takes. This this also works in pinks and oranges and all kinds of crazy things. Yeah. I'm gonna keep an implied line happening here, right to this crest and. Yeah pull it over more with the water than anything else. Okay. So, just playing. The lightest part of my wave, and I'll keep lightening it up. I'm moving to the tip here. I'm using the tip of this to kind of be more like a brush. And then when I need to do big broad strokes, I use the body of it, pulling it down into the wave. The light color will be at the top and the dark color will be at the bottom. Yeah. you will want to keep that going. All right, so if you need a little yellow in that, you get a little yellow in that. More blue, more blue. And we're making sure that our, using this to sort of sculpt, tell the story, dark colors. We're pulling them up here. This is dark purple and blue we made. Pull it up into that light pressure, allowing it to be. This is like spray paint art or a lot of other things. It's about recognizing that there's a blurry window in our lives, an emotionally blurry window. Mm -hmm. And we're telling the story of that. How do I feel about the ocean? Not what the ocean is. We tell some things we know about the ocean, right? About horizon lines, about the wave being dark at the bottom and the wave being light at the top and the sky reflecting. But then it's very important very important that we start telling how we feel about the ocean. So can I'm going to put a little white into that mix there. How many hoots do you feel this is? I think this is, this is one of those panda scroll moments. <laughs> <laughs> the hoots are relative to what's happening inside you. Interesting. This is a very good test. Like, like it's almost no hoots if you are really relaxed and allowing in this space creatively in your life. If you're really trusting yourself, mm -hmm. right? Like for me, this is almost a no hoot painting. It's like I'm just, I'm just so meditated it's in this de space. It's dehooting. It's dehooting. 
it becomes a dehooting thing. But if you're not there, if you're working through some stuff, woo, it can become a lot of hoots. Be like 14 hoots. <laughs> be okay with what it is. Be a it is attack. what it is. It, this is this is you working stuff out, and the value isn't in the finished product. Though I love when you guys get great paintings and you get likes and you get loves and you share them on social media. I post them up so I can see them. Post us up so we can see them. The value is in how you work through it and the things you're learning about yourself through the creative process. That's the value. So that's my long-winded. And I like it because you post up pictures that I can see. So I'm. Which is this a little selfish, but what I like. Little kind of purpley blue color I made added some white, and I'm scraping that along, and you know, and then here, and adding some more of this light, this frothy kind of water thing happening. You see it? I do. You see it? Yes. And maybe uh, I need to put out some more blue because you know, obviously, ocean. Much more blue. Than you'd think. A little burnt sienna, a little of the thalo, get some purple if you need it, and come back here and be like, make some of these darker in there. Just working it out. Does it need it here? Maybe it does. <laughs> some dark. I'm just coming along, pulling my knife. But would you say on average this may be a two hoot painting? No, nah, it, well. Maybe, maybe two hoot, maybe one hoot. Because it's got some, he's got some new skills. I mean, like this is. It has some new skills, and I think that's what it is. We're kind of building on some skills that we talked about. It's really easy to say, "Woohoo, let's paint with the palette knife." <laughs> it's really easy to say that, but I'm sure as you guys are getting in here, you're like, "Woo, there's some stuff afoot here." It, yeah, it takes as much. You have the same brush control issues. Same brush control issues. You need the same kind of ever building Lego locking skills. Is it doable? Oh my gosh, yes. Could you do an Aphromob painting in the future? Yes, you could. Just trying to share those skills with you so you can get there. And you'll find you'll find your own palette yeah, way. Angela Anderson today is dropping some stuff too, like some palette knife credit card project. Yeah. And that that I think is going to be very matchy matchy to this. She showed me it was super excited. So if you Ooh. guys can check that out. Yeah, definitely check when out. When I see Anderson it, I'm gonna stuff. I card it in to this because she's really worked out like how to make that credit card work out. And Which I'm not always as good at. <laughs> That's a lot of it, is, is knowing your tools, huh? Yeah. A lot of it is you can paint with any tool if you know that tool. Yeah. So I just mixed a lot of the purple and blue, and I'm going to come get some green because I need some dark color here, and I'm going to come work this backside of the wave. And credit cards are just as viable for this. Um, You know, I think that you could cut a credit card and you could make it work. Yeah. I think Angela would have that answer. So I had some green in there, and it picked up, but I don't fight it. I just work it. Because I know I'm looking for, right, what am I looking for? I'm looking for dark at the bottom, light at the top, and do some reflections through here, and we're all done. Maybe some white water out there, and then we're going to actually be out of this. So the next thing I want you guys to do okay. is get some of your blue. That might have some purple in it, so I'm going to, if the blue has purple in it, it will not mix well with the yellow. So I'm going to move this all over here. Because remember, yellow and purple are contrast, and they, f they will make gray. We want no zombie watercolors. <laughs> Sorry, Mark. Except you could do this in zombie water colors. I'm going to put out some more blue. And what I want is some yellow. We're going to be mixing this right here. Fun stuff. I want this blue slightly more to the green. I might even grab some green. Okay, wipe it out, and then I'm going to take just a smidge of this into my white. Ah, oh, there it is. There's the color. See how light that is? Ooh, that looks yeah. really cool. Yeah. And right up here at the top of the wave is this light color. Right up here, where the light is coming through. And I'm following the curve, coming down. Following the curve. A little bit of that reflecting coming down, but it's right up here. Oh, yeah. Right, right up there. It's light, light. If you have a Southern Ocean and Australian Sienna, you're like having a blast right now. You're very familiar with this mix. And you're getting an even more clarified mix. I'm curving this lightness right here. It's such a pretty green. It is, man. It is. This is the light. This is what surfers live for. This is what beach people live for. And then I'm coming along this inside edge of this wave. See how I'm making the curve, defining the curve? And a little of this reflection here. Pick a little bit of that color up, 
Here's the bead. Here's the bead. There's the bead. Super yeah, light. Show that. You were so fast with that bead. Okay. Here's the bead. Okay. Hold on. All right. Now he's hot. So it's like a little bead. And I'm going to come along here and I'm going to just very lightly make some foam, some reflection. See how it's just skipping super oh, light yeah. on the top? Right? Because that stuff just slides down the wave. It slides down the wave. Now here is the fun part. Get your white paint. We haven't had fun yet. <laughs> this is a really fun part. <laughs> See how that's just glopped on there? Yep. Oh, so much fun. Oh, I'm oh. going to make some froth on my way. Having a good time on a Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> So, so no hoots for me. <laughs> Kim Sim was like, "Have you surfed before?" I might have surfed before. So, where did you grow up that you surfed? San Diego, California. Ah, dude, like, oh my god, I totally grew up by the beach, and it was like so tubular. And what high school did you go to? San Diego High <laughs> forever, with, like complete Mustangs. I mean, it's like not there anymore. But my art instructor, Mr. Newcomb, was, like, this big surfer. And, like, he would full-on come to class, like, in his suit, dripping with his board. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> so, so I'm, can you see I'm, I'm sure just the, frosting this up here? I'm sure Ginger has some stories about that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just, just dropping this. And so sometimes the paint is picking up and coming into the white. And it's streaking through there. And you want that. Right, loading it up, thick, thick, thick. Mm -hmm. This is thick, thick, thick. You have some alma maters with you. I out here, there is Katie went to high, went to that high school. No way, Katie. Yeah, dude. And there's lots of people. Carl's Junior forever, <laughs> forever. Oh my God, Solana! Like that is just a crazy school, right? So Katie will know this. Like our school didn't really have a dress code. <laughs> Because that would have been pointless. <laughs> like, <laughs> total futility. And people would like completely come in and there's this thing. And I'm sure Katie did this. Which is like you would drive up the 101 in the morning. And the surfers would be coming in and they would want to change. To like get to work school or wherever they were going. So they'd do this little towel thing and this little wetsuit thing. And we'd be like waiting for the towels to drop. <laughs> <laughs> Misspent youth. Misspent youth. <laughs> All right, frost in the wave. Let's frost our wave. So this is a salty wave, right? And where it's churning and there's air bubbles in there, right? The wind's hitting it. There's energy happening up here, right? And that's what's happening. Tell that story. This is the energy of the ocean right yeah. here, okay? And you're just having a blast. And I'm look, wind's hitting it, so then I go flick, flick, flick. That's the wind hitting it. I'm telling that story. And remember, you can dig in, too. Hmm. Dig in. So Ian was asking if you might do a tutorial on Jackson Pollock. Yes. Any day. Okay. Total genius. Yes. We'll do one. Yeah. Love it. That'd be, Love everyone's it. like, yes, yes, please do that. Yeah. Any, any of the painters that you're into, yes, of course. We could, we could do some complex strings on palette, giant sized. We can talk about how that was designed. All right, can we see this beautiful energetic thing happening here? Yeah. And I'm just having fun, kind of using up my white paint, so that's what's happening for me. Because I'm like, oh, I don't. That can happen for you too, where you're like, oh, and this is where people are going to be like, this is my favorite painting ever. Because yeah, you're putting, you're frosting the. Yeah. Now I'm going to take my knife, my knife. It's got some white on it. What are you doing? White on it. Right. White on it. White on it. Yeah. And I'm going to do just some, a couple of the white. Oh. Just a, not a lot, yeah. guys. Don't go crazy. Just, just accents. A little bit, maybe even come out into here. Okay. Just a little bit. Just and the last little accent I'm going to do, okay. and then we're honestly done with the wave, which is crazy. Way did I put out way too much yellow. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I get a little like, oh my gosh, I'm painting. And like, especially if I'm palette knife painting. And then I got to do like a second palette knife painting to use yeah. up the paint I put out. Astronauts can see that pa that, that yellow right now. Okay. There's a lot of yellow. Don't do what I do. I'm coming in with just this pure CAD. Because there's pure where CAD here, right? Okay. So there's some sort of sunlight happening here. And there's sunlight coming through here. What would happen on this wave? Reflection. 
waves are incredibly reflective. They reflect our soul. They reflect where we're at emotionally. This is why surfers are chill people. They spend a lot of time working it out, just like we artists do. Yeah. They're working it out. So there is the little bit of that reflection there. Boom. This house is done. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that you could do to tighten it up a little bit is, and this is just a weird little thing for me, is sometimes I like to make a shadow underneath the froth. Oh. I've because it would have one. Right. You don't have to do that. If you're good and you're like, oh, man, I don't want to lose it. I got perfect froth. No one's going to care. Yeah. It's just that I've looked at a lot of waves breaking, like a lot. And um, uh, where the froth is, they cast a shadow. So I just like to put it in. Yeah, it's a nice little contrast, too. It does. It can really um, define some things. So I mean, it's like a silly thing, but I like to do it. Okay. Oh, my gosh. We painted a wave with a palette knife. Could that, okay. I really think that this... Was, is that as washed out on camera as it looks? Oh, no, what it is is so... Uh, hold on just a second. You stay right there. Because we have these wonderful new cameras... If Are you, you able oh, to see that well enough? I don't know. Oh, no. So check that out. See? Okay. Now that's in focus, but you're not. Uh. So I come back out to you. You. It. You. It. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. Well, you focus on it right now. <laughs> We're so okay. I feel like this is a really doable piece. And I feel like this is the beginning of some ocean conversations you can be having. Once you understand this principle and once you're looking for where is my water deep and dark. Yeah. Right? Pacific cold water is what? It's super cold. You're going to get in the cads. You're going to get in the purples. You're going to make that stormy cold water deep. Um, don't use black, but it has that element to it, right? Yeah. If you're like thinking Tiapu, like the black water. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? That wave going to gonna gonna curl you. It's going to thrash you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if you don't stay sort of attached. <laughs> so <laughs> the thing is the ocean has a lot of personalities and it has a lot of flavor and it has a lot of like how it's doing. Like if you want to know how the plane it's doing, you spend some time with the ocean. The ocean will totally tell you how things are going by its color, by its mood, by how it expresses. When you're in warm, placid, tropical waters, the way it's got that incredible clarity, get that Australian sea out. Get that Southern Ocean blue out. Tell those beautiful, beautiful, clear blue stories. If it's angry, you know, get those deeper colors out. Shade the bottom of your wave. Remember, it's going to be light right up here in the curl if that's happening, right? Uh -huh. And we're going to do one that's broken. We have to follow this up with a wave that has broke, mm. right? So at some point, we're going to come back with the broke wave so I can show you where the highlight is there versus the water as it's coming down on the curl. We're going to cover just different little ways. We'll talk about waves, and you guys will be like breaking down paintings going, I get it. Yeah. I and I want to say thank coming. you to everybody. We had a huge, huge audience with us today. We had th over 300 people pretty consistently through it. We've still almost got 300 people with us. Thank you all for coming. Thank Please you. don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, share, all those wonderful button pushes Please you can do. Please be kind to yourselves all week. We will be dropping stuff while we're on vacation, so watch for that. Or and we'll be dropping other vacation? important... Well, it's not really vacation, it's, is it? It's, 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 well, I, I'm going to love every minute of it. But I, I think that's what it is. It's going to be fine. But no, it's, a, it's, it it's a work week far <laughs> away from home. Okay, so during the week, week where we're not there... And so there's that happening, and then um, also watch the channel because obviously there's the big pet week coming up, which you guys are super excited about, and that's going to be huge. Biggest right. thing we've ever done. Hugest thing ever. So watch for information on those things. Last and question before we go. Mm. Uh, can you tell, how, is there an easy way to quickly tell if, there's a, if a painting was painted with oil or acrylic when you walk up to it? Besides the smell? Besides it lasts the for years? Um, yes, there is. And I am going to look it up and post it yeah, on our, our I am. channel. I, I've heard this before, and there's this really brilliant, Daniel Elliott told me this really brilliant answer, which is not currently occurring to me. But yes, there is. <laughs> I'll post it up somewhere <laughs> so you can see it. But basically, you know, there's smell. There's, is it crazy? There's the finish. Um, smell is usually the first one. Obviously, you can tell I have a feeling about the smell. And yeah. a lot of them for years. And the will, smell. Did she mention the smell? Right. Um, acrylics will, unless they're, you know, they'll have that plastic sort of feel. So there's some stuff. But there's a quick tell, and I'll find it, and I'll, you I will tell you guys. All right. We love you guys. We do. Take care of yourselves. Be nice. Have good vibrations. Give yourselves a little relief. Yeah. Big hugs, guys.
come join us live Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 11 a.m. Central or enjoy one of the hundreds of paintings available on replay anytime 